here at the zone. So first few things we're gonna talk about um, is equipment for pickleball. Once you're ready to get out and start playing, um, you're going to use, obviously, a pickleball paddle. They come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. And when you get ready to play and you come on into Pickleball Zone, we've got demos that you can try out so that you can find the paddle that is right for you. Okay, so when you go out to play pickleball, it's important that you choose the right equipment. So there are different styles of pickleballs based off of the type of court surface that you're playing on. If you're playing on a hard court surface, which is just like a tennis court surface, you're going to use a ball called an outdoor ball. Why they call it an outdoor ball is because if you see the size of the holes in these three pickleballs, you'll notice that they're a little bit smaller than the ball that Michael's holding. The reason for the smaller holes is that when you play outdoors, you want to cut down on the wind resistance on the ball. This particular ball we refer to as an indoor ball. However, that can be slightly misleading. This type of ball with the large holes in it is only meant to be used if you're playing on a wood surface or more of a multi-surface, um, more like a plastic uh, gym style floor. So if you're playing on that plastic style floor or a wood floor, you're going to use this ball that has the larger holes because it is going to bounce up a little bit higher and be better for that particular playing surface. The other thing that we mention at the start of every class is equipment. We talk about the types of paddles that you can play with. However, we also talk about the importance of wearing a court shoe. A court shoe is a shoe that is going to work on the type of surface that we're playing on. It's a tennis shoe or a pickleball shoe, it's basically the same thing, with a nice hard rubber sole on the bottom that will not allow your foot to roll when you're moving from side to side. Um, it's not ideal to wear a running shoe or any other soft soled shoe as the court surface is like sandpaper and your foot can stick and you can end up hurting yourself. So we always like to mention wearing court shoes when you play pickleball. Okay, so a few important things about ready position, how to hold the paddle, and grip pressure scale for pickleball. Number one, when we're in our ready position, the most important thing to keep in mind is that you always want this top tip of your paddle pointing in an upward direction. That means that I'm starting out on offense and in a neutral position, that way I'm really quick to get to any shot that I need to. Just like this. Now, the grip pressure scale in pickleball is a scale that goes from one to 10. One being a very soft grip where I would almost loosen my fingers and let go of the paddle. A 10 being such a tight grip that I could probably not squeeze any tighter. When to use what number on that grip scale? Anything soft, you're gonna keep that grip about a five or less for any of your dink shots, your drop shots, or any of your blocks that you're trying to drop soft. For anything that you're trying to hit that ball hard, you're gonna squeeze six to a 10 on that grip pressure scale, helping to give you a little extra power on those shots that you're trying to win the point with. The basic way to hold a pickleball paddle has two variations. Number one, we're going to hold this paddle as if we are giving it a handshake. The V of our hand right here is gonna be lined up right in line with the edge of our paddle. Now, the second variation to this grip is called a V grip in pickleball. What that means is I'm simply gonna take my pointer finger and I'm gonna put it up on the back of the paddle, making a V between my fingers, still holding in that same handshake position. Both grips have their positives, so pick the one that feels right to you. Okay, so now Michael and I are gonna take you through the basic rules of pickleball. Now, keep in mind that the rules in pickleball were made for one of two reasons. One, if something is simply too easy to win a point, they made a rule that would make it a little bit harder so that the points could last a little bit longer. Or, if one team has an unfair advantage over the other team, they've made a rule that will help to take a little bit of that advantage away from that team. So now we're gonna take you through each of those rules and show them to you as well. So the first one that we're gonna talk about is about this area right here. We, as pickleball players, refer to this area as the kitchen. However, that is its nickname. What this area is really called, if you were to look it up in the rule book, is the no volley zone. Now, what is a volley in pickleball? Anything that we've hit out of the air. So, with this rule, you can never be inside the kitchen and hit a ball out of the air because it would simply be too easy for you to win the point. Michael, can you demonstrate that? So if we were allowed to stand in the kitchen and hit that ball out of the air, it would simply be too easy. 
So, anytime you are hitting a ball out of the air, you must remain behind the no volley zone line, or as we call it, the kitchen line. So Michael will now demonstrate hitting a volley and staying behind the line. And he maintains his balance so that he does not fall in the kitchen, because the other part to our kitchen rule is, if Michael strikes a ball out of the air and his momentum based off of that shot brings him into the kitchen, they consider that the same thing as being in the kitchen and hitting it out of the air. So we're gonna demonstrate what not to do. Okay, so just a reminder, anytime you wanna hit a ball out of the air in pickleball, it's okay as long as you remain outside the kitchen line and you regain your balance right after that shot. Okay, now we're going to talk about when it's okay to go into the kitchen. Anytime your opponent has hit a ball to you that is a ball that's going to bounce in the kitchen, it's totally okay to go in the kitchen and play that ball. Michael and I will demonstrate that right now. As we were playing that point, we were able to step in the kitchen because every one of the balls that we hit, we allowed to bounce before we hit that ball. Now, keep in mind, the kitchen itself is not illegal. So if someone hits you a ball that's going to land a little bit shorter in the kitchen, you can step into the kitchen ahead of time before it bounces. Just make sure it does bounce before you hit it. I'll demonstrate that now. Okay, so just as a reminder, anytime you want to hit a ball out of the air, you can do so, but you must remain behind the kitchen line. Anytime you'd like to go in the kitchen to hit a ball, it's okay, but that ball must bounce before you hit it. And if you do hit a ball out of the air, you cannot step in the kitchen as a follow through. You must hit that shot and regain your balance before you're able to step in that kitchen for that next bouncing ball. Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate a ground stroke style serve for you today. Why we refer to it as a ground stroke style serve is because it resembles our return of serve. Now, I'm going to start so that my feet are in a diagonal position as if I had already taken a step towards that ball. A way that I can check my feet and make sure that they're proper in this serve is by simply taking my paddle, putting it down with my feet, and making it point to my target. If it's pointing directly at my target, I know that my feet are lined up properly. Now I want to make sure, within the serving rules, that my ball is always below my waist or below my belly button when I start, and that my paddle tip is starting beneath the ball. I'm going to have a nice tight grip with this one. I'm going to hang on to this ball, pull the paddle back, simply let go as my paddle's coming forward, and finish by following through. Now Michael will demonstrate for you a front of the body style serve. All right, this serve is called the straight ahead front of body type of serve. Now the way it works is you will stand and point your toes at your target, which is the middle of that uh, left of a rectangle on the side, that side of the court. And you will look at your target, which is the middle, then put the ball below your waist, slightly in front of you, and then watch the ball and the paddle Arc the paddle back, swing through the ball, and fall through. Okay, feet straight at your target, look at the target, ball and paddle below your waist, swing back, strike the ball, and fall through. Okay, so one more rule that applies for the serving team is called the two bounce rule. What the two bounce rule is, is that when I serve the ball, 
to the other side, that's considered bounce number one. The person returning serve on the other side must let the ball bounce before they hit it. Then, when they return the ball to our side of the court, we have to let the return of serve bounce, bounce number two, before we are able to hit it. So at the very start of the game, if our team is serving, we are both going to be starting from behind this baseline because after we serve, we're going to stay in our ready position back here, waiting for the return of serve to come over and bounce before we strike that next ball. And remember what we talked about with the rules, if something is really easy, especially when it's for the serving team, they've taken that shot away from us. So there is no serving, running in, and volleying in pickleball. It would simply be too easy to win the point if you were allowed to do that. Okay, now it's time to talk about scorekeeping. When you're saying the score out loud, you're going to say three numbers. You're going to say your score first, your opponent's score next, and then you're gonna say, which number server are you? Are you the first person to serve this turn, or are you the second person to serve this turn? So, before I serve each ball, it's my responsibility to call out the score. If I am on the right side of the court when the side out has happened, and my team is now ready to serve, whoever is standing on the right side of the court will become the first server for this turn. Zero, zero, one. Okay. Now, if we win that initial point, we are going to switch, and I get to serve again. Now I'm going to call the score one, zero, one, because I remain the first server of this point. One, zero, one. Now, if we lose this point, Michael and I are going to stay just as we are in this position, and Michael is going to be the next server. I'm done serving because we did not win the point. So now, Michael is going to call the score. Now that Lisa has finished her serve, it is my turn to serve, and I would call the score out as one, zero, and I'm the second server on the team. Just to recap, when you say the score, you're going to say three numbers. Your score, your opponent's score, and what number server you are. Are you the first person to serve the turn, or are you the second person to serve the turn? And remember, that number doesn't stay with you throughout the entire game. It's based off of who is standing on the right side of the court when the side out comes back to you for serving. Okay, so we've already talked about scorekeeping, but now we're going to address what happens at the very start of the game. So if Michael and I are the team that's going to be the first team to serve, we're at a bit of an advantage over our opponents. So when we call the score, instead of referring to myself as the first server, I'm going to refer to myself as the second server. The reason for that is, because we're at an advantage that we get to score points before the other team, they're going to take away one of our servers just for this very first turn. So just remember at the very start of the game when you are in this position and you call the score you're going to say zero, zero, 2 You're referring to yourself as the second server because as soon as you are done serving it's a side out going to your opponents. Zero, zero, 2 watching the introduction to pickleball class with Michael and I here today. We'd love to have you come on out and see us here at Pickleball Zone. We offer all sorts of private lessons, clinics, camps, 